an iPS cell, iPS actually stands for induced pluripotent stem cell, complicated name, simple cell. It's a mature cell that has been reprogrammed or back programmed to become what essentially looks like an embryonic stem cell. So the, the beauty of this is we take a cell that is already developed and already committed to be what it should be, like a skin cell or a blood cell, and convert it back to where it can become any cell in the body. Stem cells have certain genes that are turned on and certain genes that are not. What is done here is genes are introduced into these adult cells, these mature cells. These genes are normally expressed only in the embryonic stem cell. If you put them into this mature cell, they turn that cell into what looks like an embryonic stem cell. The pie-in-the-sky fantasy, which we hope will work, is that um, a patient who needs a, a tissue replaced or a cell type replaced could go to the clinic, have, for example, a piece of skin removed, or it might possibly even a swab from inside the mouth where skin cells are available. Um, have this cell reprogrammed back into what looks like a stem cell, and then have that stem cell now subsequently develop into whatever tissue was problematic. So in this case, maybe a liver or, or a pancreas or a heart. Um, so you could have a, a minimally invasive procedure done, slight skin biopsy or taking something from inside the mouth, and replace, in theory, any organ in the body. This is a chance to revolutionize the way patients are treated for many diseases. Right now, the technology is still in its infancy. So there is extensive manipulation of these cells. It will not be cheap to make them. It takes uh, several weeks to back differentiate a cell into a stem cell, and then several other weeks to grow that up so there's enough cells that you can do a transplant scenario. So it takes a bit of time. Depending on the severity of the disease one wants to treat, there could be a drawback to this type of a strategy. If, if one is having a heart attack um, and needs immediate care, growing up stem cells over a month or two in culture isn't going to work. However, if the goal is to eventually replace the tissue or replace the organ, such as the heart, and there's enough time allowed, then they would be quite useful. The situation with iPS cells now is that it takes several genes to back differentiate these cells into what looks like stem cells. It's, it's unclear exactly how safe these cells are for, for the clinical use at this point. Some of these genes have, in other systems, been associated with malignancy or cancer. So the advantages of the iPS cells are that they are patient-derived and don't require the use of embryos. Disadvantages are they do use genes that are known to cause cancer, and it takes quite a bit of time to grow these up. Um, advantages of embryonic stem cells would be that, in, in theory, these embryos are readily available, and if banked appropriately, they could be taken right off the shelf and used almost immediately. So you could cut off the time frame it takes to develop the iPS line. Um, there are advantages and disadvantages of exploring all approaches, and I think it's going to take a few years to sort out which will be the best. And in, indeed, it may be true that different stem cell approaches may be better to treat different diseases. Um, it is a potentially new way to address many, many different diseases, and um, I think any inroad we make at any different disease will be spread to others and, um, and will leverage so that the field moves forward faster.